said you're fired, basically. Just like, like a 10 second phone call. Two teen friends fired after landing jobs together at a popular pizza place. The question one of them asked that they say prompted the call still to come. Also, a family is not waking up at home today after a devastating fire. Who they're demanding answers from now coming up. Plus, people left to handle a pesky problem on their own. Why the county says it is not spraying in part of one neighborhood. Good morning, everybody. Six o'clock here on KRQB News 13 this morning. I'm Adam Atchison. Good morning. I'm Kristen Curry. Today is Tuesday, June 28th. So you've been saying all morning, keep the umbrella handy. Yeah, that's going to be the case every day for the next seven. So make sure you uh, don't put that away or maybe grab the raincoat before you leave. Downtown Durango, you guys look beautiful this morning. A mostly clear sky overhead as far as the numbers go. Not bad. Up there, 54 degrees, 48 though in Alamosa, and even Taos dipping into the 40s this morning. We have more of those 60s and 70s as you get into central New Mexico, and 60s down there to the south as well. 64 over in Hobbs will take you to Silver City at 63 this morning. As far as the Santa Fe area goes, from those 60s we have out there now, plan on the 80s this afternoon, very similar to what we had yesterday. Sunshine and a little bit more cloud cover as we finish up this afternoon, and really a few spot storms still possible for the capital city as well. Those storms really favoring the higher terrain as we get into the later part of our Tuesday. But as we transition into midweek, more moisture equals more storms and we're excited about it, especially as we hit Thursday and Friday. Those two days look to be the soggiest of the next seven. Our temperature is staying near average, even a little bit below normal for some places as we transition towards the later part of this week as well. So I'll break down the numbers as well as when and where I expect the storms today through the rest of the week that coming up here in just about 10 minutes. All right, Kristen, thanks so much. The time now is 601. People living in Bernalillo County will likely look for ways to ward off mosquitoes today. City and county workers can spray areas to help kill them, but residents in one neighborhood say they were told they're in a no spray zone. Neighbors in Western Meadows near Rio Grande and Alameda called 311 to ask the county to spray to kill mosquitoes. The neighbors said the county said no because somebody else in the area asked the county not to spray. A no spray request means workers won't spray within a thousand feet of the property affecting nearby residents. It is a real dilemma and it's one that neighborhood associations like ours face all the time. Spray or not. And the Environmental Health Department says workers call people on the no spray list each year to verify that they still live there and still don't want any spraying to help control the mosquito population. Developing this morning, state police are investigating a deadly officer involved shooting that happened on the Laguna Pueblo. Officers say they were called in to help tribal police about a mile and a half north of I-40. From Sky News 13, we saw a truck stuck in a ravine as well as several armored vehicles and a body. State police say one of their officers fired that fatal shot. A family is homeless after this morning after fire destroyed their home and now they're blaming the city and demanding answers saying fire hydrant problems are to blame. This is all that's left now of Dinah Barron's home after a fire over the weekend in her hometown of Gamarco near Gallup. The fire destroyed two homes and Barron's brand new Camaro. Barron says this might have been avoided had the fire hydrants near her house were working. There's one water hydrant right behind my house. Not more than, not more than 10 feet from my house. If they would have had water there, they could at least save at least half of my belongings. Neighbors say it's not the only hydrant out there that's dry. When News 13 called the fire department, we were referred to the city clerk who did admit the hydrants were not working. We then called the Gamarco Water and Sanitation District, who the city says is responsible for maintaining the fire hydrants. As of this morning, we've not heard back from them. A GoFundMe page is set up to help that family. You can find the link right now on the KRQE News app. Families affected by the Doghead Fire have more donations to help them out this morning, and they came from APD's collection on Civic Plaza on Friday. The water, pet food, and other items filled a trailer. They were delivered to the Edgewood Salvation Army. That's where people in need have been told to go for help. APD says getting people to donate was fairly easy. It just speaks to just the, the, everyone's normal humanity. Um, we see someone who's in need, and we want to reach out and help them. Uh, we were just the, uh, the conduit for which people could do that. The department also collected more than $1,500 for families to purchase other items that they might need. Happening today, Uber is partnering with New Mexico once again to launch a new program 
aimed towards Spanish speaking residents. Here are the facts about this. Governor Susana Martinez will be in attendance along with officials with Uber today at 3 p.m. at the National Hispanic Cultural Center to announce the launch of Uber Espanol. It will be available to residents and visitors in Santa Fe, Albuquerque and Las Cruces. The free app allows riders to request an Uber with a Spanish speaking driver. New Mexico is now the sixth state to offer Uber Espanol. 605 new this morning, legendary former University of Tennessee women's basketball coach Pat Summit has died at the age of 64. Her son Tyler Summit issued a statement saying that his mother died peacefully at a retirement community in Knoxville, Tennessee. Summit had Alzheimer's disease and had died of died of complications from it. A family spokesman said as coach, she led those uh, the team to uh, in Tennessee to become one of the most dominant teams in college sports, winning eight national championships. A settlement between Volkswagen and U.S. regulators over an emissions cheating scandal is awaiting a judge's approval this morning. According to the Associated Press, the German car maker has set aside $10 billion to repair or buy back close pol polluting vehicles. Last week, uh, last September, I should say, Volkswagen admitted installing a so-called defeat device in 11 million diesel cars and SUVs worldwide, including nearly 600,000 in the U.S. The settlement would be the largest auto scandal settlement in U.S. history. Albuquerque city leaders say millions of dollars to create tech jobs are heading to the Duke City this morning. Albuquerque will receive $4 million over the next four years for those jobs. The White House announced $150 million in tech hire grants for local economies around the country. The grants aim to launch technology training and help stimulate job growth. Mayor R.J. Berry says it could help non-traditional workers in the city. We have a tremendous number of individuals who are underemployed. They have a lot of talent, they have a lot of ambition, but, they, but the, the regular system of employment, the regular system of education uh, just hasn't worked for them. The mayor says there were more than 230 applicants and Albuquerque is one of 39 recipients. A teenage girl and her boy and her friend are both without their pizza parlor jobs this morning after she asked about equal pay for herself. The pair was hired at the same day at this pizza parlor in Kansas City. After landing the job, 17 year old Jensen Walcott and Jake Reed talked about their wages and that's when they found out that Jensen was being paid eight bucks an hour while Jake was offered 825. They have the same experience and they were hired for the same position. Jensen thought for sure it was just a mix up, so she called her new boss and asked why her wage differed from Jake's, but was put on hold. I was like, maybe when I'm on hold right now, she'll just offer me 825 and everything's going to be good. but. She didn't do that. Jensen was fired and told it was against company policy to discuss pay with other employees. Jake was fired too. Jensen says she's not sure if she'll take legal action. Meantime, the company's offering the teens their jobs back and the manager responsible has been let go. An 11 year old boy bitten by a shark while surfing off the coast of North Carolina is speaking about those very tense moments today. Lamar says it happened over the weekend when he was surfing with his stepfather. He was about 60 yards from the shore, and that's when he said he felt a pinch, got out of the water, and looked at the inside of his foot. I was crying. I was scared. I didn't know what happened. Lamar had to get 12 stitches that day. At first, there was speculation about whether or not it was actually a shark bite, but a shark expert in Florida did confirm that, in fact, he was bitten by a shark. And now Lamar says he's not sure if he'll be returning to the water to surf again. Pretty frightening. Shock and devastation. I, I had no idea it could be that much. A serious rent hike. How much one man says his landlord is demanding now and why he claims it's unfair. Taking your pooch along for the ride when a pilot program for pets on board buses begins and the rules that you'll have to follow if you plan to bring your dog or cat on board. And concerned neighbors why the city's plan to revamp a busy stretch of road on the west side isn't sitting well with some neighbors in that area. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to KRQE News 13 this morning. It's good to have you with us. I'm Adam Atchison. Good morning. I'm Kristen Curry, and today is Tuesday, June 28th. So, Carrie, pack the umbrella again today. Yes, thank goodness. We're looking at more <laughs> storm chances. I we'll know we it. only saw a few isolated storms over on the west side yesterday. We're still talking isolated today, but the coverage gets better later this week. Promise you that. As far as our roof camera goes, time lapse from this morning. See the sun come up. A few clouds out there, but not very much. A gorgeous sunrise taking place in our temperatures 
temperatures not bad either. Most of us are pushing 50s and 60s. A couple of cooler spots in the 40s up in Alamosa and Taos, but you'll find more of those widespread 60s as you close in on that southern state line. Hourly forecast, how about more than 90s expected here in the metro area? Looking to top out near 91. Yesterday we were at 93 at the Sunport, so pretty close to the same numbers. Another round of storms expected today, especially if you are up in the higher terrain. That's where we will see the favorable rain chances, but more moisture equals more storms, and that's going to be the trend here as we get into the later part of this week. And our temperatures not doing a whole lot. They'll pretty much stay near or even below average for this time of year, and that goes through this weekend. So I'll break down everything you need to know, the details on the storm chances, as well as those neighborhood numbers coming up here in just about 15 minutes. All right, Kristen, thank you. New this morning, the west side of Albuquerque is booming and traffic is following suit. City officials say their plan to revamp a busy stretch of Irving Road is necessary to accommodate cars and still cater to neighbors. But residents in the area set to get a makeover say they're not convinced the city has their best interests in mind. News 13's Catherine Mazone explains why. The city says that it owns this right of way easement. There's the, the red line going through the trunk of my son's car. They live on Irving Boulevard. A west side corridor slated for major changes. We have to always think about traffic, traffic volumes, growth on the west side. There's still a lot of areas to be developed. Melissa Lazoya is Albuquerque's director of municipal development. She says the area where these two residents live lies in the city's second phase of construction for the corridor. It spans La Paz to Unser, a thoroughfare for those who live in Ventana Ranch or commute to and from school at CNM. Lozoya says there are no design plans yet, but the idea, she says, is to make improvements so the road can handle projected traffic volumes due to future growth. We have to make sure as we approach the intersection that we're providing enough width so that the stacking of the cars does not extend the entire corridor. Lozoya says that could mean making use of land the city owns but residents currently use. Any improvements if we widen the road would be within our right of way, our existing right of way. And Lozoya says that doesn't necessarily mean a four lane road. We could have buffered bike lanes, you know, obviously they need sidewalks out there, so we would put in sidewalks. So it w could have the width of a four lane, but not the facilities. Four lanes never improves a neighborhood. Neighbors don't see the benefits. They say drivers already speed through their neighborhood and fear a wider road, four lanes or not will make it worse. You don't see any way that this could help your neighbor. Oh, terribly. It'd be absolutely awful. Catherine Mazone, KRQE News 13. A resolution passed in the city council guarantees that the city must take residents' concerns into consideration here, but those like Pete and Karen Hill in the Irving Residence Committee are not convinced that their suggestions will affect the city's final plan. Both sides say they are optimistic. A Santa Fe police officer accused of slapping a woman is awaiting word on his jury trial date this morning. In March, Officer Trace Everidge was downtown in Albuquerque. According to the criminal complaint, a woman was arguing with Everidge when he allegedly told her, quote, I own you. This is my town. I am the law. The complaint says he slapped her so hard her left eyebrow was cut. And then I ran this white guy who said he was a cop. And like we got out of the car, we were arguing, and he slapped me across the face. Everidge is an, uh, an alternative duty pending the outcome of the trial. An exact date for the jury trial has not been announced. He's pleaded not guilty to aggravated battery. A former police officer and former court security officer accused of sexually assaulting a woman are now beginning probation. James Waters, a Milan police officer at the time, and former Cibola County Court Security Guard Jesse Terrazas took a plea deal yesterday. They were arrested in 2014 after a 20-year-old woman says they got her drunk and attacked her, but both pleaded guilty to lesser charges of giving alcohol to a minor. Waters was also charged with attempted false imprisonment. The district attorney's office tells us the plea deal protects the victim from having to go through a trial. After you know, a pretrial interview where their defense would be to unfortunately attack uh, the victim. Waters was sentenced to two and a half years probation. Terrazas will be on probation for the next year and a half. Happening today, Donald Trump is preparing to deliver a policy speech on trade and the economy in Pennsylvania. Yesterday, Hillary Clinton and Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren teamed up to try to attack Trump, claiming his bad policies would hurt Americans. 
A recent poll out Monday shows only 45% of Republican voters are satisfied with Trump as their nominee, while 52% of Democratic voters say they're happy with Clinton. 635 New this morning, Republicans on the House Benghazi Committee have released hundreds of pages in a new report detailing what happened before, during, and after the deadly attack in Benghazi, Libya in 2012. The report is strongly critical of all government agencies and the coordination among them. According to the report, the committee faults the Obama administration, accusing it of stonewalling important documents and witnesses. But the White House says that the president was deeply engaged during the 2012 attack. This morning, some Democrats say the Republicans report is just a way to undermine Hillary Clinton's presidential bid. This is a Republican conspiracy theory in search of a conspiracy. Clinton was Secretary of State during the attacks, which killed four Americans, including U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens. The report comes a day after Democrats released their own report, stating that Clinton never, never personally denied any requests from diplomats for additional security at the U.S. outpost in Benghazi, and that the military could not have done anything differently that night. Also today, British Prime Minister David Cameron meets with European leaders in Brussels to discuss the U.K.'s stunning exit from the European Union. The summit comes as world markets continue to feel the effects of the Brexit. The Dow dropped another 260 points yesterday, while Standard & Poor's lowered Britain's credit rating. Time now, 637. Albuquerque's Animal Welfare Department is offering free microchipping again today for all cats and dogs ahead of the 4th of July holiday. Any pet owner can take their animal to either the east or west side shelter from 930 this morning to 6 in the evening through Saturday. No appointments are required for that. Shelter workers say it's important to make sure that your pets can be identified just in case they get scared and run off because of fireworks on the 4th. According to Animal Welfare, last year about 80% of the dogs and cats coming into the city shelters were never reunited with their families, mostly because they didn't have an ID. Also happening this week, pet owners will be able to take their dog or cat on the city bus starting on Friday. Albuquerque City Councilors approved a six-month trial in April that allows one dog or one cat to ride with you during off-peak hours. Cats have to be in a crate. Dogs also have to be in a crate or muzzled and leashed. The pilot program runs through the end of the year, and if it goes well, City Council will discuss whether to make it permanent. A San Francisco man is fighting eviction this morning after he says his landlord hiked his rent by an outrageous amount. I've basically been hit with a rent increase of 400%. I don't know where I'm going to go if I have to leave here. Neil Hutchinson's landlord raised his rent from $1,800 a month to a whopping $8,000 a month. The landlord also wants a security deposit of $16,000 and claims $8,000 is a fair market price. Hutchinson says he was never given proper notice and has now appealed to the rent board. Now he's being evicted and he's now supposed to be out of the apartment before the board, the rent board, can make its final decision. Hutchinson's lawyer says they've presented the case to a judge in hopes of slowing things down.